We're here at the Illuminolite booth with Mike and they have a vast majority of products that we're gonna talk about and bring to you for Woodcraft. Mike, take it away. All right, so Illumilite manufactures uh, mold making and casting materials that are used for a wide variety of applications. Uh, in the Woodcraft uh, kind of area, uh, we're focusing on two main products. One is two-part epoxy that can be used for uh, doing things like river tables, coating applications, pennies, that type of stuff, pictures. Just artistic um, kind of things. Yeah, artistic kind of things. Uh, and the reason we use epoxies is, is they're very slow curing and the air bubbles come out themselves. Um, and it's very, very user friendly when we're doing uh, vast different arrays of uh, coating applications. This is really clear. Um, did you have to put this in any kind of a pressure situation to get that No, so, so the epoxies have a very slow open time, so it allows the air to come up and pop on their own. This will stay liquid for about an hour, which allows the time for those bubbles to dissipate and, and evacuate on their own. And the heat created from the, the mix, which is a, yep. what, a, a two, two to one? Two, no, it's a one to one. One to one? Equal volume by volume. Okay. Uh, it will create heat when you put it in big masses. So we don't recommend casting anything thicker than about a half of an inch at a time. At a time, okay. Yep. When you apply something like that to pictures and paper like this, yep. No effect from the heat on the pictures? I mean, no, I can so, see it does in here, but right. have you ever had any problem with that? So typically what you do for like pictures is you would lay them down, you would seal them in with like a wood glue or like a Maj Paj or a, an Elmer's glue, and that will actually seal the pictures and glue them down. Okay. Once that's dry, it dries clear, and then we cover it with the epoxy. So do a Maj Paj first. Maj Paj first, and you're gonna be in very good shape. Okay, that's a, that's a good technique to know, because yeah. you're gonna look at that and go, oh, you just covered it with yeah. your material. Yeah. So the Mod Podge protects your photo. It protects the photo and keeps it sealed, uh, and then you can simply coat over top of it and you get beautiful results. Tell us about this little uh, fishy action <laughs> thing there, buddy. So we, like I said, we, we deal with a, a very extreme number of applications, from sure. automotive replication to uh, fishing lures to medical, you name it. And we actually uh, helped some displaced shrimp workers. Uh, we went down to Costa Rica and taught them how to basically make their own moles, cast their own parts using our resins. So, yeah. Uh, so this, this is, is why there's so many sharks off the eastern coast right now, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, Very so, cool. So this is the epoxy that is basically used for uh, coating and casting. And then we get into uh, our urethanes, okay. which are gonna be down here. We'll slide down a little bit where okay. we can actually cast blanks with, uh, you can do them with all resin. Uh, you can combine them with wood and resin, and then you can turn those into, you know, phenomenal works of art, whether it's uh, containers, whether it's bowls, urns, duck calls. Uh, it's just used for casting blanks. Now this piece here, you don't sell these. People can make their own. You can make your own silicone rubber mold. Uh, other people will just simply use, you could use like a, a cardboard tube from a paper towel okay. or from toilet paper or something like that and glue that down and pour the resin in there, let it harden and then you just turn that off. Okay. So uh, really you're looking for anything to contain the material until it cures. And then like these silicone molds, or we even have a UHMW mold over there. There's actually, some people will actually make a UHMW mold that you can actually cast your blanks into. Uh, and that's how this guy was poured. So you can pour blanks of all different size depending on the mold box that you come up with. Pressure pot versus no pressure pot. You have two Correct. examples here. Yep. One of them has been used by a pressure pot. Yep. And this one has not. <laughs> I can hardly tell which one. I really, there might be a couple of bubbles in this, but they're almost identical, which is very cool. So when you're just casting resin blanks, uh, you're not putting wood, you're not putting any casting media in it. There's really not a reason to pressure cast it because like Frank said, you can get exceptionally uh, well Formed. Formed or cast materials with no air bubbles in them that are right. not going to affect your blanks when you turn them. Even just scrap blocks of wood that are swept off off the floor uh, can be used to turn absolutely beautiful works of art. So the biggest thing with urethanes is moisture and you need to make sure whatever you put into uh, the resin is dry and has no moisture into it. Otherwise, the moisture will actually create air bubbles. It's perfect for our ice cream scoop products yeah. online, right? <laughs> yeah, you right. know. Now, if you're going to start doing something like with pine cones, you'd want to pressure pot that because yeah, you've got because so many gaps on those there's things. There's so many gaps and so many things that the material's not going to flow in there, and you're never going to get every, you know, piece of ounce of air out of it. So then, when you would turn, you'd have bigger voids. So the concept is, 
you would take your uh, mold, you'd pour your resin with your uh, pine cones or whatever in there, you'd set it into a pressure pod and you'd turn it on to approximately 30 to 45 pounds of pressure, PSI. And what that does is it crushes the air bubbles so small that the human eye will not see them and it holds them in that crushed state until the resin cures. Once the resin cures, now they can't come back and you would get an absolutely beautiful, you know, cast blank that has your pine cone or your wood or whatever it is, even like large chunks of wood like this. Well, right? I don't know if you know Keith Lackner, but uh, he does all kind of yeah. great casted wood pieces. Yeah. And uh, he had made me one with pine cones and then he turned the center out of it. So it's kind of like an urn, but you could use it as a jewelry box or yeah. whatever you want, you know? Yeah. And the pine cones turn out just simply beautiful. So we have a bunch of Keith stuff here. So Keith Wagner is a long time wood turner uh, who kind of really raised the bar as far as what you can do, especially in size where a lot of people were doing pens and things like that. Uh, Keith really took it to a new level and is doing very, very large items similar to like these, uh, these castings that he's done with some big leaf maple um, and, and just other hardwood woods and, and types of woods where he's doing very large pours, even up to six and seven gallons at one time, uh, and, you know, using the Illumilite slow clear. Well, the Illumilite you can get at your local Woodcraft store or at woodcraft.com. Uh, tell us about how he gets these things so clear. So the, the resin is clear in nature. I mean, it's uh, absolutely water clear. Um, and then with uh, the use of dyes and uh, powders and, and, and combinations of the two, you can create pretty much anything that you want to do as far as uh, you know, turning applications, even with combinations of wood and other media that you put in uh, to, to make and create pretty much anything that you want. This is just beautiful. Now, you've worked with Keith from time to time and answered some questions. What are some of the tough questions you get in regards to the product and how you've helped Keith along the way? Yeah, so the, probably the biggest question becomes, uh, you know, how do you um, is revolved around pressure casting? Pressure casting is uh, the, the idea of basically when you mix the resin and you mix all these powders and you pour it on, in this complex detail, the burrows and, and porosity, how do you get all the air out of it? And what we use is uh, an item like a, uh, it's called a pressure pot. Most of them are modified paint tanks that basically apply positive air pressure anywhere from 40 to 80 PSI, depending on what you're doing. Larger items typically require more pressure. Small pens and stuff you can do as easily with 35 to 40 pounds of pressure, which is completely adequate. And you never and want to go beyond the pressure of what the, tank, the product yeah, you take it for. Yeah, the tank is rated, uh, every tank will have a, a safety rating and they will normally come with a safety valve like this that will release the air if it ever comes close to the rating of the tank. So it will uh, excuse the air and release the air uh, if it gets above or close to the safety rating of the tank. These are extremely important. You never want to apply more air pressure into a tank than what it's rated for. And really the benefit of the tank is what it does is it takes uh, all the like little champagne sized air bubbles that you get when you uh, mix and it crushes them so small that the human eye will never see them and it holds them in that shape until the resin cures. Once the resin cures, now those air bubbles cannot come back uh, into, uh, into their normal size and shape and they'll never be visible. So then when you turn your pieces, you get a completely beautiful dense piece of uh, uh, wood and resin or just resin whatever you're turning and, and you'll have ama amazing results. So. Mike, how do they get a hold of you with additional questions? Illumilite.com uh, has our uh, phone number on there. You're uh, welcome to call us, contact us through social media, uh, the website, or via phone at any time uh, that you have questions. So. You can also contact our Woodcraft tech support. Yeah. You can find those numbers at the bottom of the website of woodcraft.com. Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Is that a wrap? That's a wrap. All right, Mike. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate Thanks. the time. We appreciate what you bring to the woodworker and yeah. the creativeness is just amazing. Sounds we good. We love it. I'm a turner, so I'm going to use some of your stuff. Sounds great. All right, man. All right. On to the next booth. We'll catch you in a few.